Hello everyone, bienvenidos a todos, welcome to a very special episode. I recently had the opportunity to travel to the Galapagos Islands, which is a volcanic archipelago off the coast of Ecuador. Now it's overflowing with all kinds of unique wildlife, and also unique flavors. And while they didn't let me take a turtle back, let me show you some new flavors to add to your arsenal. Your breakfast menu this morning is going to be cheese stuffed plantain fritters with a mango hot sauce. There was a hot sauce that we encountered that was simply referred to as hot sauce. Everyone made their own versions. Let me show you how I make mine. We're going to need some chili, a garlic, just one, shallot, spring onion, roll in some citrus, and add a pinch of dill. So in the Galapagos, they use, don't juggle. So in the Galapagos, they used a lot of sour limes. Now a sour lime is a cross between a lemon and a tangerine, and it had a very, very unique taste. If you don't live somewhere that has sour limes, you could substitute one juicing orange for every two limes. Start chopping everything down as thinly as you can. You can use a food processor if you're in a rush, but I find that the sauce has a better texture when it's not a chunky mess. And you'll also feel more accomplished when you see little sliced piles on your board. Gather everything up, Dump it into a mixing bowl, and then add your citrus. Add your dill, and give it a stir. Now you can stop here for a normal hot sauce, but for breakfast, we're gonna break down a mango. Liquefy it in your favorite blending apparatus. Add it to the mix, and stir. It's actually way hotter than it looks. Moving on, grab two of the ripest plantains you can find. The starches will convert to sugars as they ripen and the fruit will get softer, which is what you need when you're trying to make a flour mix. Peel and dice. The plantain should be soft enough for you to crush with slight pressure in your fingers. Feed your fruit to the stand mixer with a paddle attachment. Whipping air into the mix will help keep things fluffy. Add some flour, baking powder, and salt, and gently stir until the flour is just combined. Over mixing will make a very dense fritter. We need eight equal sized pieces, so carefully half half your halves. Here's the tricky part. I'm gonna roll the dough into a ball before flattening it. Dish out the center slightly and fill the center with a soft cheese. Cover it with its top half, seal the edges, and gently work it back into a ball so you can't distinguish the seam and then do that for all four. For best results, deep fry until golden brown, usually about five minutes. Plate with a generous serving of mango hot sauce, and top with the fried egg. Presentation troubles aside, you should end up with a fluffy plantain fritter with a melted cheese center. Enjoy. Lunch today is going to be a remix of an ensavoyado. Now, we made some changes to the recipe, partly because of ingredient availability and partly because not everybody likes the taste of fish. But the shrimp that we're using is from Ecuador, so hopefully we get some points for authenticity. Now, we got a lot of work to do, but just think of it this way. We're making a fancy shrimp-flavored potato leek soup, and we're making our vegetable stock from scratch. Clean your first package of shrimp, but keep the shells. We're going to make a quick beast. Drop the shells into a hot oiled pan and saute until the shells develop some color and smell delicious. Lay out a layer of cheesecloth to transfer the shells to. This way we won't need to pick them out of the broth later. Drop your toasted shrimp tea bag into your stock pot along with the uncooked shrimp. Break down your yuca or cassava root into bite-sized chunks. This is a white sweet potato because the stores near me are sad, pretend it's yuca. Transfer roughly one third into a separate bowl and add the rest into the stock pot. Roughly dice a jalapeno. You can de-seed it if you don't like spice and add it to the pot. Roughly dice a green bell pepper. 
I guess you could deseed it if you're really sensitive to spice, and add it to the pot. Roughly dice a red onion and add it to the pot. Roughly dice a leek, thoroughly wash it because they can hide dirt anywhere, and then add to the pot. Add a few basil leaves, a handful of cilantro, a healthy pinch of salt, and leave it to simmer. For the next step, make sure you have enough garlic. Thinly dice up another red onion. I'm gonna chop up a red chili, skip if you're afraid. Dice a few tomatoes and chop up another leek. Transfer everything into the shrimp pan. Add some cardamom, some salt, and a small handful of fresh cilantro. Saute until the leeks wilt and the onions soften, and then add the mix to your pot. Take a break while the soup simmers for about 30 minutes. When you come back, you can take out your tea bag and using an immersion blender, rip down all the solids. Add the remaining yuca chunks to soften as we get the rest of the ingredients ready. Thinly slice a whole new red onion, thin enough for it to cook in the heat of the soup, and cut some lime wedges. In a bowl, add your onion, pre-cooked shrimp, soup with yuca chunks, and garnish with basil, cilantro, and lime. Buen provecho. Your dinner menu this evening is going to be chicken skewers with rice. Now there is a very lovely skewer culture from all the street vendors that we saw, but the problem with skewers and plain rice is that it doesn't reheat very well for meal prep. So we're going to be making a Galapagos inspired mango coconut sauce. Start off by making a fresh round of hot sauce, no mango this time. Cut your chicken thighs down into bite sized chunks and drop into a large mixing bowl. Add your hot sauce, a bit of olive oil and thoroughly mix. Leave for at least 20 minutes. For our skewers, roughly chop a red pepper and a red onion. For our sauce, mince some garlic and finely dice another onion. Add some coconut oil to a large pan with some salt, cumin, coriander, and cardamom. After a 30 second spice temper, add your garlic and onion. Saute for about five minutes before adding your mango pieces and after another five minutes or so to develop color, we can add our coconut milk. Start skewering. The best aesthetic is to alternate the meat, onion, and red pepper. But you might find that you have more chicken than everything else. Don't worry if you start getting weird skewer combinations towards the end, it'll balance out later. Trust me. Lay your skewers out on the grill for about five minutes each side, but don't eat them yet, they may not be cooked all the way through. Back inside, the mango should be soft enough to squish down. You could blend, but this gives the sauce a fun texture. Add any leftover mango hot sauce from breakfast and give everything a good stir. Start de-skewering your skewers into the sauce and leave for another 10 minutes or so for the chicken to finish cooking and for the flavors to combine. Don't forget your rice. Split everything up into your containers for the week and enjoy. And there you go, folks. Galapagos inspired meals for the week with flavors almost as unique as their wildlife. If you enjoy this kind of content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Otherwise, please let me know in the comments below what flavor tour we should do next. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.